We're continuing again the fourth chapter of Ephesians. This will be our 44th lesson. I thought it was necessary to make a few cursory comments about the uniqueness of spiritual knowledge and understanding. <clears throat> In academics, it's enough to know the facts. And in most school testing, that's what you're tested on, whether you know the facts or not. There is a form of learning, teaching, that insists that you know how to use them. Like I believe when Michael was in aeronautical training, he had to take an engine apart and put it together and then start it. <laughs> See if it worked. But most, most academics are not that way. But in Christ, it's important to know the facts. Now, we don't want to under, underestimate that at all. But it's necessary to know how to use the facts and how to employ them. Now, this is, uh, in our day, is a much neglected area. Most of the time when people teach others how to use something, they use their own knowledge and the plans of men, and that's normally the way that's done. They have their workbooks and so forth that tell you how to do it. But that's not the best way to teach. The best way is for people to see the significance of the facts and to know how to, fact, kingdom facts we're talking about, and then to know how to use them effectively, know how to use them, not how, know how to use them to play or something like this, or to put on display, or, but to know how to take them and use them in, in life. Mm -hmm. Kingdom facts are like hammers and saws and so forth used to build life. Yeah. You're building a life, that's what you're doing, you're building a life. Yeah. Look at another way, you're building a place for God to stay. You're building a place in which the Holy Spirit can work. You're building a place in which Jesus feels at home. And to do this, it does take effort, but you have to have the right facts to work with. Now some people don't want to give you like the commandments, that's all they'd give you. And you do need to have those. But you notice that's not what Paul's doing here in this fourth, this fourth chapter. He's really getting down to the nitty gritty of what you need, foundational kind of material. Now in the beginning of this fourth chapter of Ephesians, he's showing us how to use the facts of God choosing and God predestinating and God calling and God saving and God redeeming. He's showing you how to use those things. You don't want to forget those first three chapters when you read chapter 4. Amen. Because that's giving you the details of what's required to carry out what's done here. Now he begins by showing us that there's strength in singleness. The more plurality there is, the more dilution there is. See? If you have a lot of different things, you tend to have more of nothing. That's actually the way it is. But when there's a lot of single things, things that are one, now you can do some building those kind of things and he's showing that when you take these single things one one body and one hope and one Lord one faith one baptism so forth. when you take these facts and you put them in philosophical hands they disintegrate they don't have any power you can actually put this to the test. You, could, you, you can find that there was a time when you probably knew that God was one, but you didn't know how to use it, and you just kind of theorized about it, and when you did, it just fell apart. 
That's the way it is. God won't let anything eternal prosper in with only human attributes and human capacities. He will not allow this to happen. Well, that's another way of saying you can't exploit the truth. You can't take the truth of God, one God, and all these ones, you can't take the truth of that and like make it for personal, isolated advantage. It won't work. God will not let it work. And if a person thinks they've done it, they've just been deceived. That's all. So that's what he's talking about. Is This relates now, God, he's told you right up front early on, he told you what God's purpose is, to gather everything together into one. Now, so he's telling you some one things that you need to, produce this thing, the oneness that he's talking about. And it's this marvelous for consideration. So this is the sixth verse. This will be the last of these uh, ones. And then he's going to, he's going to get into us. At this point he's not talking about us. Even when he talks about the body, it's all about it's a, in a sense, it's us, but it's collective. It's not us personally. So our verse is verse 6. You got proceeded with there is one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. We can say who is above all, who is through all, who is in you all. See, he that believeth, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Yeah. See, that's a very important word. Yeah. Former president had a little trouble with that word is, you might remember, but you don't want to have trouble with it. Is. There is one God and Father Now, there's a certain level of spiritual thinking where we're limited to one reality. It says we only got one thing to work with. That's all. And that one thing might have, it might be, might be multifaceted, it might have a lot of different aspects, this sort of thing, but it is essentially one. When it comes to God, you got one. There's no such thing as, well, there are, areas, there are called gods, like the god of the Babylonians and the god of the Ammonites and the god of the Syrians. But they were really not gods. They were just ideas. Yeah. And they crystallized them into something physical you could see, and they called it a god. Uh -huh. One god, that's all, one we're considering now the ultimate God. Now, <clears throat> I thought, I wonder if there's like a definition of God, what that word means. It didn't tell you anything, but I'll share with you what it says. Official definition, the word God, what we call the lexical, that's the Hebrew definition. The supreme deity or magistrate. That really cleared it up there. Supreme divine being. The one supreme supernatural being as creator and sustainer of the universe. A term usually used in the ancient world of beings who have powers or supreme or ultimate who have powers beyond the capacity of mortals. There's a certain generality in those definitions. <laughs> this is the best men could come up with. This is the best they could come up with. Even in the original language, this is the best they could come up with. Now here's the English word, God. I'm, I'm showing you something here. 
The English word God is defined as a supreme or ultimate reality, the being perfect in power, wisdom, and goodness, who is worshipped as creator and ruler of the universe. Now why does that kind of come short of what you desire? It's because the concept of God is outside the circumference of human experience. Yes. Yep. You're talking about something of which man knows absolutely nothing. An uh -huh. uh -huh. eternal, he doesn't know what that is. Uh -huh. The only thing you know about this is what God revealed. That's all. The only thing you know about God is what God's made known. That's it. That's right. yeah, amen. There isn't any way to know anything else about Him at all. Yeah. You may say, we can see Him in nature. Well, just tell me what you did see in nature before you read Romans 1.20. Just tell me what you did. Mm -hmm. What did exactly you see? When you saw that I see God in the trees, what exactly do you see? What I'm telling you is that there's a reason why God is not definable. Mm -hmm. You can't really have a lot of faith in something you can spell out. Mm -hmm. huh? We know you, you, what you see. You, you, what you see doesn't have anything to do with faith. Yeah, that's right. But what you can define doesn't either. Mm -hmm. yeah. Defining human definition is in the same category as human sight. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So it's a very difficult one God. Well, the truth of the fact is that God is known by His revealed associations. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, take, I want to take just a moment to develop this. In the Scripture, He's associated Himself with certain things. That is so. They're in that association. There's some revelation of God in it. <clears throat> some of them, the God of the earth, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. See that is on scriptural record. There's scriptural records of each of these yeah. personalities. And in it, God did something with these people yeah. that unveiled something about himself. Amen. The God of Bethel, mm -hmm. that's where Jacob wrestled with. Mm -hmm. See, God made known something there about himself. There's the God of the Hebrews and the God of the spirits of all flesh. There's the God of my rock for stabilization. He's the God of David and the God of Hezekiah and the God of Jerusalem. He's the God of heaven and the God of, the, of my salvation and the God of glory that reveals himself. The psalmist said, He's the God of my strength and the God of my mercy. <laughs> oh. He's called the God of hosts as armies, hosts armies. He's the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and the God of Daniel. Now see, in each of these, he's telling you, if you will become familiar with the revealed accounts of these people, God will show you something about himself in them. Well, what of the, what of the person who's neglected that part of his Bible? What of a person who's, who doesn't have a work, good working knowledge of from Genesis through Malachi? How much does that person really know about God? Well, it's limited, to say the least. See, because there's a lot. That's the bulk of your Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in it, 
God just isn't telling you what he can do. He's making known his inclinations, his preferences, what he hates, what he loves, where he's going, how he mer he's making known himself in these accounts. Now, <clears throat> in Christ, what is known of God is, is elaborated. Mm -hmm. He's the God of patience and consolation. <laughs> is that good? Mm -hmm. He's the God of hope the God of peace, the God of all comfort, the God of love and peace, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of glory and the God of grace. See, that's the place. So another, and these are areas in which if you look into these areas, yeah. uh -huh. you'll see something about God in them. The one God, this one God is made known in his dealings with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Israel and David and Hezekiah and Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego and Daniel, Abednego and Daniel. He's particularly made known in Christ, and most particularly, most fully. So it's important to know the association of God with Christ. Amen. Amen. That is the superior association. Uh -huh. Under it comes your association with Christ, but the superior association is God and Christ, and in that association, oh, the things we learn about God. God can't compromise with sin. God is intent on blessing. God has to judge sin. Yeah, all these things are made known in this association with God. So when we say one God, there's one God that's really made known. No other God has been made known. Amen. Amen. All false gods, there's like a veil of ignorance around them. Why? Because God will not allow such gods to be known. Behind every idol, for instance, there are demons. This is taught in Scripture. Yeah. The law taught it, and Paul taught it too. They were sacrificed, uh, idol sacrificed to demons. Mm -hmm. yeah. But these demons are not known. Yeah, right. God will not let them be known. Other than the fact that they're evil and perverse and will be destroyed. But they, only the one God has been revealed. And he's the, <coughs> he's, the, he's made known in the diversity of gifts also. There are diversities of gifts, but there are diversities of operations, but the same God which worketh all in all. See, so in these, <laughs> you know, I got some marvels. When you see this, in these various spiritual gifts, he mentions in 1 Corinthians 12, God is making, he's working in this, showing, he's not showing us one another, he's showing us himself. Yeah, amen. But he, it's through one another because otherwise it's too high. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. See, he, he reveals himself by working through, we might say, our, our brothers and sisters in Christ who are our peers in Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it, that's what makes it discernible. Uh -huh. Otherwise, you're just talking philosophically. Yeah. See? So that's why if you have a body <coughs> of people that aren't expressing themselves, you're limiting what can be known about God. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's so serious. Yeah. Well, you'd be hard-pressed to find any person that thinks that's a serious situation. But this is how God reveals himself, just like he did to Abraham. I see he re reduced down his, his preferences so far as humanity is concerned. He reduced them down in working with these people. Yeah. And as you see it, oh. Mm -hmm. Yes, brother. You might say that this type of, or this methodology of revelation is what it means to us. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Because th this is our life experience here in the earth with That's one right. another, associations with one another. Our lives interacting and so forth. Yeah. Lord God shows how he, he he reveals himself in that kind of an environment. That's right. And the ultimate was 
when he be, when the word became flesh and That's walked right. among us. That's right. Amen. 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 See when go ahead, sister. You, you made the the observation earlier that when we saw the creation, we really we really couldn't discern the Lord in it until he revealed himself. <laughs> he he had to open up our understanding to it. Well, there's a sense in which we don't we don't understand the new creation right. until God opens that That's up. Right. Whenever yeah. whenever we we view one another from uh, the vantage of flesh, we actually see one another as competitors, yeah. and and it opens us up to strivings and emulations yeah. and, and things like that. But whenever mm -hmm. this this teaching that you're giving, when it's properly understood, then the brethren become uh, a reason for thanksgiving. Amen. Because mm -hmm. we're really looking at the Lord. Amen. And we're, we're giving thanks for how He is revealing Himself to each of us severally by mm -hmm. His working in us corporately. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So it, the, it, this is important for us to know. Oh, yes. Because yeah. we're looking at the new creation. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now here's, here's how it works. <clears throat> So you're in one of these situations where you become you become acutely aware of the fact that you have need, and brother or sister so and so comes and ministers to you what you need. Now it's in order to thank them, but that was God who did that. Amen. That's right. That's what you, that's what you have to see. It's God that did that through them. Amen. That's why Paul would thank God for so and so, because he saw this truth. In other words, God making himself understandable yeah. uh -huh. through the ministry his people have to one another. Amen. See, that's, 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 yeah, you might think that this is easy, no. but it isn't, because that's why whenever the writings of Paul yeah. are read in the gatherings, the religious gatherings, uh, of our day, for the most part, they can't relate to what's being said. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. This is this is it's marvelous. Mm -hmm. That's part of. That's what his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. That's what that's talking about. But the Tony. The Hebrew writer said that uh, by now. You, yeah. At this time, you should be teachers, yeah. mm -hmm. and actually, we are. We are teachers. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and mm -hmm. this is what we're teaching. Each of us That's has right. an aspect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a ministry of the Spirit. That's right. That teaches God. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. But when you see this, it transforms like sermon preparation, yeah. <laughs> teaching, uh -huh. witnessing, uh -huh. it giving a testimony. Yeah. Trans, it transforms mm -hmm. this because you begin to see, wait a minute, God is working in me mm -hmm. to show himself more yeah. clearly yeah. to this or that. Some people, because of various trials, mm -hmm. they've almost lost sight mm -hmm. of the fact that God's long-suffering and God is a God of consolation. Mm -hmm. the, the trial pressed upon them. Here comes the brother, mm -hmm. sister, mm -hmm. young or old, who it is that make a difference. And they shine up yeah. by themselves being merciful. But it's God working in them that does this. Uh -huh. And then that promotes faith. Now the person knows, I can trust. Mm -hmm. I can trust in God. See, that's how, that's the thing Paul's talking about. There's one God that does that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. The book of Daniel, the one thing I, I brought away from that most clearly is that God is the God of, of heaven and earth. That he reputes the inhabitants of the earth as nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And that he is, in fact, the most high. That's mm -hmm. right. There's nobody that can challenge his authority and does exactly Amen. what he wants. That's right. Amen. Amen. And see, that was lived out in Daniel. That's right. Where when he was tried with the Amen. diet. Amen. You know, Amen. When he was tried with the diet, he knew that God was the God of heaven and earth, or else he'd have been afraid of the king. That's but he right. wasn't afraid. He wasn't. But he wasn't disrespectful. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. See, but nonetheless, he trusted in God, and I'm convinced that that demonstration also helped the Hebrew children when it was their time to say, 
we're not careful to answer you on this. You see, all these things were demonstrated. That's right. What God was mainly drawing out of the book of Daniel is that He was over all things. Amen. And so it was lived out in Daniel, it was lived out in the, in the three Hebrew children, mm -hmm. and it was also lived out through Nebuchadnezzar. It came Amen. out of his own mouth. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so here again, we see this demonstrated through his people. Amen. Amen. So you... Yes, Sister Barb. I was considering that the reason why we're able to give mercy or love or anything is because what we've received from the mm -hmm. Lord. That's mm -hmm. right. So before we're able to minister to another brother who's in need, we ourselves have first received it. That's and right. And that's what's enabled us then to give to the others. Amen. 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 There's only one God that works like this. That's right. <coughs> no other God works like this. Amen. Mm -hmm. There are institutional gods. They don't work like this. Yeah, they're institutional gods that they work through a staff. Uh -huh. yeah, that's right. An administrative staff. Oh yeah, I'm telling you the truth here. They work through an administrative staff and special ministers for special groups. Mm -hmm. That's how they work. Mm -hmm. That's not how God works. Amen. God's made himself known. Yes. He didn't have an administrative staff in Babylon. Mm -hmm. He had some people that lived solely for him. That's right. And he only had four of them that we know about. Mm -hmm. But they got a lot done. Amen. See? Yeah, private agenda has been outlawed in the kingdom. <laughs> because if you're, in, if you're in the body and your yeah. foot decides to have a private yeah. agenda, you'll have to go to a doctor pretty quick. Yeah. Because it just won't it won't work. It's not useful for the body. Yeah. And but in the in the in, in the assembly, we come together, we're, we're we we do not come together just to say, well, I'm gonna get what I want from this meeting. Well, that's not <laughs> that's not what the body does. No. One God. There's one God who's made known in all these different associations. And, and one father of all. The, he's declared to be the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Father of whom are all things. 1 Corinthians 8.8 8, And the Father of mercies. 2 Corinthians 1.3 And the Father of glory. Ephesians 1.17 And the Father of spirits. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 12.9 And the Father of lights. James 1 17. I was saying, Father, he's affirming he originates mm -hmm. and initiates yeah. the thing. He created us, mm -hmm. Father of all spirits. He created us. It's emphatically. This is emphatically denied by all evolutionists. They refuse to give God glory for the inanimate things, animate things, or man. Obstinately, they refuse to give God glory. And God have mercy on the person who allows that to be taught in an institution that says is Christian, or that parents who are willing mm -hmm. to subject their children mm -hmm. to that kind of teaching. Mm -hmm. It's godless. Yeah. I tell you, God views these things, there's one God. That's right. He's not an evolutionary God. Mm -hmm. Not that kind of God at all. In referring to God in redemption, God is also the sole originator. He that only created us, he re-created us in Christ Jesus. We are his workmanship. There's only one. We're the result. Everybody who's in Christ is the result of one worker. Amen. One creator. Right. One father. That's why they essentially are alike. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> when you've got different kinds of Christians... You've got different kinds of creators. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God doesn't create different, different in nature we're talking about. They have different ministries, but they're essentially the same. Yeah. They have a love for the truth. They trust in God. They live by faith. They walk in the Spirit. See? They essentially are the same because one God made them all. Mm -hmm. He's the Father 
of all. One God and Father of all, who's above all <clears throat> and through all. Now we're talking about a lot of alls here. The other versions read he's over all or he rules over all. Works through all and is in all. Another version read, he's over everything and through everything and in everything. He's over all of us and in all of us and living through every part of us. And there's other versions. Now this is a key aspect of the one God. It, this has been vastly understated by the modern church and universally denied by the evolutionists. The evolutionists does, will not concur with this mm -hmm. through all. Yeah. It, evolutionists will not concur with that. Champions of free will and free moral agency. Yeah. They allow man to direct his own path. Mm -hmm. God doesn't. Yeah. Amen. If he did, he wouldn't be above all and through all. No, no, no. Yes. Now there's a word from God on this. Jeremiah confessed, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. <laughs> it's a shame somebody living today in the full orb glory of Christ don't know as much as Jeremiah knew. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, when you read things like this, God, through Jeremiah, has revealed something about himself. Mm -hmm. See? So if you're trying to figure out what your life should be and you're working it all out, and suddenly this dawns on you. It's not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Mm -hmm. Then you start looking toward heaven and say, Thy will be done. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It changes your plans. That's right. And how you go about them completely. This says a lot about American churches mm. and their focus on politics yeah. mm -hmm. and country, yeah. freedom of this, freedom of that, rights yeah. of this, rights of that. Uh, way out of order, way That's out right. of focus. It yeah. point, points people in the wrong direction. Absolutely, That's right. Absolutely right. It helps greatly with the pride issue when you know that a man can receive nothing except to be given him from the Lord. Right. So if a brother Amen. or a sister has something, well then you should be able to receive it, no matter what it is, because they they didn't get it on their own. Yeah. So if, if they're, you know, the flesh can be jealous of, of, of other people and say, well, why, why didn't I get that? Yeah. But a man can receive nothing except to be given him. Yeah. So you got to look at it like, that's a blessing that God's given that person something that I need. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in the world, if a person wants to learn about higher mathematics, he doesn't say, look, I can learn it on my own. That's right. Nobody thinks like that. Yeah. They want to go to someone who knows about that field. Yes. Yeah. God has raised up people that know about the spiritual Amen. fields. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And there's different ones that have different expertise in certain ways. Mm -hmm. They're available all to one another. Solomon, you remember... That happens in the body of Christ. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Solomon, he received wisdom from God. It was the secondary wisdom, but even, even that, he said, man's goings are of the Lord. Yeah. How can a man then understand his own way? Mm. That's what he said. Yeah. Well, God in his association with Solomon made that known made that known is sometimes you're a mystery to yourself. Mm -hmm. you, 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 why did I, why did I do that? Why did I say that? Someone might step along and say, well, I can tell you that this, but man doesn't, he doesn't have an understanding because God's directing his way. So sometimes you come across things you really, you can't, ex you can't explain them. And through Solomon, God's making known that's one of his ways he works. God works in such a way as he leaves enough mystery in life so you've got to depend on the Lord. Yeah, yeah. 
See, that's how God is. Mm -hmm. God doesn't clear up everything. Yeah. On purpose, He doesn't clear. He didn't clear up anything for Job. Yeah, that's right. You can see this in the writings of Paul when he talks about <laughs> yeah. his way to the Lord, how God showed him grace and mercy, though that's he right. was acted ignorantly and unbelief. That's right. And even then later, when he writes about the events of 2 Corinthians 12, where he heard things that couldn't be spoken, yes, right. yet some things were revealed to him. Some were revealed. And he reveals them to the Corinthians, but he didn't reveal everything to them. You can see that, that the things that aren't revealed mandate faith. You've got to trust God in that, whatever that has to do with, you've got to trust God in that area, and God's that way. This is how God is. See, there's just one God. This is how he is. He's revealed himself through his various associations. And he's above all. <clears throat> Not he ought to be above all. He is above all. God is defined in Scripture as almighty. Mm -hmm. That has to do with above all. Yeah. Almighty. There's no limit to God's might or power. Now the man who had the demon-possessed boy that threw himself in the fire and the water and so forth, he said, Lord, if thou canst do anything. He, you say, well, he should have been stronger in faith. Well, he, a lot hadn't been revealed to him. Yeah, that's right. he, had, he was pointed in the right direction. He just yeah. didn't have the answer. So he said, no, so if you can believe... This is the way my father is. This is, oh, this, this is so though Jesus said, this is the way my father is now. Here's how the kingdom operates. It's not whether I can do it or not. It's not even the question. The question is this, do you believe? That's the question. Because all things, this is how God works now. All things are possible to him that believes. So if you've got this situation, this aggravating you, and you don't know what to do in it, you can work on resolving the situation, or you can work on believing. And then God will listen to you. <laughs> this is how God is. See, first of all, before Moses ever made any petitions of God, he first of all convinced Moses who he was. Then once that was done, he could plead for Israel on the mount. Because he knew, he knew what God was like. See, a lot of people's Chief handicap is that their knowledge of God is too small. But here's the good news. Nobody has to remain in that status. No one has to. You can increase in the knowledge of God. And as you do, everything connected with the knowledge of God increases too. In you. He's above all. He's appropriately called the most high. Several places in Scripture. Daniel, or Nebuchadnezzar, said he rules in the kingdom of men. No, he does. This is the one God. He rules in the kingdoms of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basest men. Even Nebuchadnezzar. Well, I don't see why well, this is how God is. Yeah. I'll be right up front with you. Some people deserve a lousy leader. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. No, God gives them one. Yeah. Some people, they live as though they can handle everything themselves. So, God gives them a leader that encourages that kind of nonsense. Mm -hmm. Even though the one God knows, you can't plot your own path. You can plan you're going to do this and plan you're going to do that. and It's not in man that walketh to direct his steps. God's above all. He really is above all. David referred to God as Lord Most High. That's a term used elsewhere in Scripture quite a bit. He's high above all nations. Psalm 113.4. Well, that'd be good to know if you're living in a despotical nation. Huh? 
You're living in a nation that persecutes believers. You're le living in a nation that predominantly worships another God. It's good to know that the one God is above all nations. Amen. This is the way he is. And he's able to do exceedingly, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. That's all God is. So you're, the, the, the difficulty is not in knowing what God can do. The difficulty is your thinking. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever, however high you think, he's higher than that. Yeah. He's able to do toward you is the idea. Uh -huh. Exceeding abundantly above all you ask your things. So at some point now, if you really believe the one God, at some point you've got to be willing to trust your future to Him. Amen. Amen. Expecting great things. You've got to be willing to do that. You may be an old man with a barren wife, but you've got to be willing to trust God. It's not always going to be that way. You may be sitting in jail for 12 or 13 years. And it may look like everything's falling apart, but you trust God, and pretty soon God delivers just a word to let him out. He was bound with shackles that hurt his feet till his word came. God said, that's the end of the trial. And it abruptly ended right there. What about your trial? It can abruptly end. Right there. That's the kind of God we got now. The one God, that's the kind of God He is. He's above all. Humble the mighty hand of God. See, the thing is, you can't exalt yourself. God has actually called you to trust and even anticipate an end that you cannot bring to pass. Amen. Like Abraham Amen. was called to, to yeah. be the one through whom a sea would come, that many nations would yeah. rise out of. Well, Abraham could not possibly do no. that of himself, but God demanded that he believe it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Good good words, brother. Good mm -hmm. words. See, God's above all. All right? That means no one can effectively challenge what he says or does. He's above all. Now this categorically stated, and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand, stop her from working, or say unto him, What doest thou? What's this all about? He's above all, see? Above all. The fact that God's above all accounts for the affirmation, if God be for us, <laughs> who could be against us? That's why that statement can be made, because of who God is. That's why it's said there's no temptation taking you but such as common to man. But God will, with the temptation, make a way of escape that you may be able to bear. See, if he wasn't above all, he couldn't do that. But he is above all. How about this? And all we know, we know. I say we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, who are the called according to His purpose. How do we know that? There's one God who's above all. Amen. He really is. The fact that this is a that this is true shows the utter absurdity of the critics of Scripture, who tell us that they. Cor Copyist corrupted the text. Yeah. If that's so, then God's not above all. Yeah. He's not above the copyist then. Yeah, that's right. I mean, what else? How else can you reason? How else can you think this out? Mm -hmm. You say, well, what about these corrupt things? They're not God's word. Whenever man adds his thought to God's word, it stops being God's word. Amen. As what Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees, he said, you make void the commandment with your tradition. Yeah. Amen. It's not God's word anymore. Yeah. You mingle, whenever you mingle human thought with God's word, you may write Bible on the cover. 
but it's not God's word anymore. Yeah. Why not? God's above all. He will not allow his word to be corrupted. Why not? Because we live, he has mandated, we, li we live by every word of God. Amen. How could he say that if the word of God wasn't made available to us? Yeah, right. How could that be said? And how could life continue? Why if man can abort or corrupt or pervert the scripture or allow culture to creep into the scripture or redefine words of scripture? You say, which version is it? That's your work. That's not my work. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're to live close enough to God. You can pick up on this. Mm -hmm. Sister Barb, you had a word? No, sir. Okay. <clears throat> He's above all and through all. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the idea here is that God's presence and power pervades every environment. Now, he's talking about environment. He's not talking about God's in the elephant and mm -hmm. so forth. He's talking about the environment. There is no environment in which man can traverse mm -hmm. where God is absent. Mm -hmm. The only environment known in Scripture like that is the lake of fire, mm -hmm. which nobody's been thrown in it yet. Mm -hmm. And it's away from the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Well, let's let, let's let David, let's let the psalmist express this in words. This is the 139th Psalm, verse 7. Whether shall I go from the Spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? All right, now is there some place that God isn't? See, If I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, that is Hades, or the grave, behold, thou art there, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. Amen. All right, now you, now this God's made known. This is, he made known this about himself. Mm -hmm. So you see, you can't get in a circumstance where God isn't. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's right. You, Satan can't drag you into an environment where no access to God is available. Amen. You can't, whither shall I go? You can't run far enough yes. to get totally away from God. <laughs> As Jonah can tell you. Yes. He's through all. See, in every environment, I think, look at the advantage this is, brethren. Yeah. See, sometimes we share with one another some of our experiences. Are they, they're unpleasant experiences. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't desire anyone to share the whole experience with us you know, at all. But in that experience, as bad as it is, God is there. He's where you are. Amen. You, but if you don't see it, yeah. or you're not convinced of it, you can't advantage from it. Yes. So he's through all. So there's some times when this will especially be ministered to you. Uh -huh. Now God's through all. Uh -huh. One time I was in a flight to England and a bad storm occurred. It's very frightening. But God, He, he gave me confidence. I, I, I'm in heaven. Mm -hmm. This plane isn't, this plane didn't fly someplace where I'm not, yeah. son. Amen. Well, it's, it's true of all circumstances yeah. of life. One God who's through it. He's the only God like this. No other God's like this. No heathen God's like this. Mm -hmm. Heathen God's, they've got to make a trip to Mecca. You know, they've got to make a long trip uh -huh. to be where their God is. But our God's want to make a trip to be where you are. Yeah. He's through all things. Well, you got to remember those prophets of Baal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, the God's prophet was mocking them. <laughs> That maybe he's asleep or yeah, well, <laughs> gone on a journey. <laughs> <laughs> Even Israel at some points in their history made the mistake of thinking God was only in a certain place. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. All right, one last phrase. And in you all, above all, through all, in you all. 
Now this is represented in different ways, different versions. In us all, the Douay version says, in everything, God's Word Bible says, within all, Williams Bible says, living through all, New Living Translation, through every part of us, the message, dwells in all, within us all, Williams Bible. He lives in all of us, Contemporary English Bible, is present in all, message. Well, see, some of those are a little too ambiguous for me. Several versions appear to be groping in the dark. You see that when you read this? They say you're kind of groping in the dark. What does it mean when it says it's in all? Well, I, I don't like really to bring up the Greek a lot, but there's two different Greek texts. One used the word human, 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 which means you. Another used the word pas, which, which just means all. What does he mean when he says, is in you all? What does he mean? Does he mean like everybody in the earth? Does he mean everything in the earth? No, no, it isn't what he means. Mm -hmm. That's what Hinduism believes, God's in everything. Right. See? No, that's what it means at all. He's talking about the people of God. Yes, amen. That's what this text is all about. Uh -huh, yeah. He's already told us he's building the Jesus is building the church for a habitation of God. So that's what he's talking about. He's in collectively. He's in us. In other words, right. in us all doesn't mean each and every one. Although as I'll show you, that is true. Uh -huh. But that's not the point he's making here. He's in you uh -huh. all. God's people are an environment in which God yeah. can be found. Amen. Amen. Unless this is speaking about believers, it would appear to have no relevancy to the subject Paul's talking about. He's talking about the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. That's, that's how he started out this chapter. Keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Well, if this doesn't have to do with that, then what? why bring it up? Now, the truth of the matter is God is in the individual believer. Yeah. This is particularly true of them as a whole, mm -hmm. but even as individuals also. Now, notice what the Word of God says on this. 1 John 4.16 He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Yeah. So there you are, yeah. God. He's in all, see? Mm -hmm. Again, he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in God, and he, God, in him. So there it is again. And hereby we know that he abideth in us mm -hmm. by the Spirit which he, hath, he, God, has given to us. So there, so there it is affirmed. Yeah. Now someone asked me one time, student, what the most arresting truth or thought I had ever had was. And I told him that the Godhead mm -hmm. could dwell in me. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the most arresting thought I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Here God dwells in you, yeah. Christ dwells in your heart by faith, yeah. and the Spirit, your body's a temple of the Holy Spirit. So all the entire Godhead in some sense dwells in you. So that's, whoa, that's, uh, <laughs> you wrap your mind around that, you find how little your mind is. When speaking to this personal aspect of the indwelling of God, God in the individual, mm -hmm. Jesus said, If a man mm -hmm. love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we mm -hmm. will come unto, we say unto, him, and make our abode with him. So there he is, God in all. See, yeah. there it is. And the individual. But God collectively, God collect is in the believers collectively. Concerning God dwelling his people, Paul had already informed us we're building together for habitation of God through the Spirit. So God can be in us together when we're together. Then he cited a scenario to the Corinthians 
where a person concluded that God, God's in this assembly. He posed a situation where a stranger or unlearned or unbeliever come into the assembly. While they're in the assembly, everybody is prophesying, speaking on the edification, exhortation, and comfort. 1 Corinthians 14.3. Now the people prophesying don't know this apparently, but God is, through them, He's speaking about this man. And suddenly the thoughts of His heart are revealed to Him. This is why, see, when someone comes mm -hmm. to visit, don't be hesitant to speak up. We got now we got a word on this yeah. rather than in the Bible. Amen. That Amen. God can speak to a variety of people and actually unbeknownst to us, he's addressing mm -hmm. something that needs to be addressed. Yeah. That the person's not going to learn outside of the people of God. Yeah. He's not going to learn it. And so what will he do? His secrets of his heart are made known. Mm -hmm. He convicted, in other words. And then he will worship God. Mm -hmm. He will fall down on his face. He'll fall down on his face and worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. There it is. He saw it. Amen. He saw it, that God was there. So how do you tell if God's in an assembly? Because of the way they sing? <laughs> I'm afraid not. The way you know is if people, their hearts are exposed, whether for good or bad, that's how you know. God's in you. Have a truth. All right, this God we're talking about, this one God, he's the, he's the God that indwells all his people together or individually, This and he's the only God that does this. Amen. One true God. The indication of God being in you, the implications of it, are most arresting mm -hmm. to consider. It's a glimpse into the truth Jesus prayed to his Father in John 17. Neither pray I for these disciples alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they all may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. <coughs> What's that mean? As long as the church is divided, the world's not going to believe that God sent Jesus. Now, you, there may be a lot of efforts to convince them they will not believe that God sent Jesus. But when the time comes, and it will come, mm -hmm. when He will give them all one heart, the time is going to come, when His people are one, God will move in, uh -huh. yeah. and the Word will go out. Yeah. Amen. And people will be convinced. Yeah. Amen. That's what happened at Pentecost. That's exactly what happened in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. That's right, yeah. We're talking about thousands of people added to the church in a short period of time. Why? God was in them. That's right. Why was He in them? They were all together in one accord, one spirit, one heart, one mind. Yeah. See? Yes, amen. All right, he's going to get set now from this point on to give us some powerful exhortations. Tell us what we're, what we're to do with this. Yeah. But remember, all things are possible with God. You can get Him in the house. <laughs> That's right. Things are looking up. Yes, amen. But this thing with God being abiding in, in a person yeah. uh, is, is provisional. Obviously, we, it's going to bring things that we need, but it's also conditional. He, he places a condition. He's very precise. If a man love me, yeah. or or another place says, if you, if he love the brethren, this is this. <laughs> This is not an automatic thing that you just say, I, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, boom, all of a sudden God dwells in you. It, it, this, is a, this is something that you grow in. So it means it's, a, it's attached to a measure of faith. 
So to the measure of faith you walk in, you yeah. can understand and see God. then God can't abide in. But the assembly is a special circ yeah, situation right. where God has brought many, yeah. many measures together, so to speak, and he can, so he can manifest himself Amen. in a more abundant way Amen. when the body's assembled. Mm -hmm. So we've all experienced that here. We've, I, I, I have never witnessed anything like this in my life to where it, it, it's almost... You, Brother Mike brought this up. It's all, but you can almost look forward to something new being expounded. At, you know, when the body's together, yeah. they come together, yeah, and it's like it's 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 not like it's just, it's just not boring like a lot of church services that I've been exposed to traveling. It's just like we're doing the same thing. We come together, we do six things, and then we go home. We've done our thing. And but that really is the yeah. biggest reason why it never exceeds past yeah. that, because it's not really a matter of the heart; it's a matter of yeah. a routine. Mm -hmm. yeah, the whole re Amen. The, the whole reason for the church mm -hmm. is what God is doing. Yes, Amen. And what He's planned and purpose. That's the whole reason for the church. You you take God's purpose out of the picture. There's no reason to have the church. Yeah, that's right. You said this, but I just like to say it again. <laughs> this strength and singleness, this one yeah. strength and, and being one. I saw this more as the Lord is drawing us closer together. Yeah. You know, and um, I like what you said about God would not allow anything with just human attributes to prosper. So um, He draws His people together, like you said, so He can show Himself. That's right, so yeah. that's why you got to be one of one mind. And so he, he makes us stronger and stronger in this. That's right. And it, it doesn't mean that one mind is easy to attain. But if you, if you believe in your heart mm -hmm. that what God says can be done, you will aim at having one mind. And if, you're, if you have a diverse mind, then somebody's wrong. Yeah. You can't have different minds and everybody be right. Someone's wrong if there's a different mind. Mm -hmm. Now, finding out which one it is, that calls for humility and a lot yeah. of other things, but uh -huh. that's the way it is. And the less you have of this con competitive thinking and contrary thinking, the less you have of this, the more you learn. Yeah. The more you've got of this, the less you learn. That's just the way it works. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sister Barb. I was um, struck again tonight with how great a desire God has to be known. Mm -hmm. Because of all of the abundance of associations that he reveals himself through, it shows his desire to make all of himself known to his people. If he showed one aspect, our understanding would greatly lack. Mm -hmm. I was reminded of that old fable when the blind men were feeling different parts of the elephant. Yes. And they got a whole different idea from one another of what this thing was because mm -hmm. they were in different areas learning something different. But the, the mercy of the Lord in showing his people so many different aspects of his nature and his person mm -hmm. shows that he desires for his people to know him. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would add this to that. These different aspects are essential yes. to our salvation. Yeah, right. None of them are like auxiliaries. That's right. Yes, Brother Tony. Earlier, we were talking about uh, God is above all. <clears throat> he, 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 he directs. Mm -hmm. and, right. um, Amen. He, he, knowledge, he can send a word like he did uh, to Joseph, yeah. and, and it was over. And I, it occurred to me, I was thinking about Paul. Now, uh, his circumstance that he was under a grievous trial, that thorn he prayed for mm -hmm, three times. Mm -hmm. Now, the circumstances really never did change for him. Okay, but the effectiveness of the trial ended because God gave him grace. So I, 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 the thought occurred to me, you can be still living in the circumstances. Yes, the amen. circumstances don't have to ever change. Okay, You've got amen. to learn to live. I think I've experienced somewhat of this, and I never understood that. You, we prayed, God, get me out of this situation mm -hmm. or get me change these circumstances, but sometimes the circumstances don't change. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. proper to pray, keep me. Yeah. That'd be a proverb, keep me, uh -huh. protect me, yeah. strengthen me. That all presumes... You may not get out of the circumstance. You may have to walk in the fire. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. But if he sends someone to walk with you over whom the power has no 
Yes. For a fire has no power. I mean, that'd be great comfort, wouldn't it? Amen. Yes, Brother Paul. You see in First uh, Samuel where uh, Phyllis is kind of Saul, um, they, they perceive God as one of their gods, and that it's any central location kind of like you're talking about. It. You have to go to Mecca. Um, Dagon had his own temple where, That's where right. he was worshipped. And they, when they kept, when the Philistines captured the ark, they considered this exact same thing. Well, maybe he's just right where there is, right where the ark is. Therefore, he cannot help the Israelites anymore. Mm -hmm. That's right. But they did consider <laughs> this guy's above all. And then yeah, this, and then yeah. Dagon is uh, down worshiping, down laying. That's right. Amen. Right. The right. Next morning. That's and then good. the following morning, Dagon is all torn apart. Yeah, that's Amen. right. That's Amen. good. God, God, he wasn't over all Dagon, was it? He was under all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, Brother Ricky. Thankful for that example. Well, you mentioned about the when all the brethren are prophesying, and a man comes in, and, and the thoughts of his heart are yeah. revealed. Mm -hmm. The thing that that made him sure that God was in that place is that God had done through the people what only it's, God. Could. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Only God can search the heart. Apparently, it was something only God would know. Yeah. 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 It's it's right. the secrets of his heart. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So as a it, it's a, it, it is kind of a picture of what God's doing in salvation. Mm. Through the body, God is doing what only God can do. Amen. It's not, it's not common things that men Amen. can do. Amen. It's yeah. something only God can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had it in my life. I've had my plans changed in the assembly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been a while since I had this experience, but I did. It's like the Lord said, the wrong plan. you got to quit. Quit thinking about that. Mm -hmm. But something in the assembly alerted me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, how grateful we are for thyself, thy greatness, thy singularity. And we're depending upon you, Heavenly Father, to direct our steps. We thank you that you promised you do. In Jesus' name, amen.